Hey guys, it's LA Week. Uh, let's get after that and survey of U.S. history. Today we're going to look at uh, the Rodney King beating and how that led to the Los Angeles riots. And then next uh, session we'll look at uh, the O.J. Simpson case and how that tied into, uh, into everything that was going on in the 1990s. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to look at the L.A. riots. Um, and this is going to occur in uh, April of 1992. And in terms of riots, and I know we've looked at uh, many of these uh, in class over the course of the year and the semester. Um, yeah, this is going to be the, the um, largest riots that we're going to see in American history. Um, I, I remember it vividly, you know, when this, when this was happening. I remember Dodgers game was postponed. They were playing the Montreal Expos. And in the, uh, in the uh, newspaper at the time, uh, it said postponed due to riots. Uh, so the entire city of Los Angeles was uh, was basically shut down as a result of this. What we're going to see, and we can draw some real parallels to uh, what we saw going on in the 1960s, uh, where there was, um, you know, thanks to the Black Power Movement and the Black Panthers and some of that stuff that we saw going on in, in California, where the issue was um, really a distrust uh, between law enforcement and the uh, Black community at the time. And so what we're going to see here is another uh, police brutality case. And certainly this was something that uh, started uh, the riots that we saw in um, Newark, New Jersey, also in Watts, another part of Los Angeles in the 1960s. And in many ways, this is just a, kind of a, a continuation of what we had seen uh, 30 years earlier. And we see some of the, the images from uh, the LA riots are absolutely uh, incredible. And I will tell you, and I know some of you probably don't uh, watch the, the video selections that, that I give you. Um, I have one that I've shared with you. It's called Uprising Hip Hop and the LA Riots narrated by Snoop Dogg, and that is a uh, must watch. Uh, so make sure that you are clicking on that. And what we're gonna see is this, this occurs in uh, South Central, South Central uh, Los Angeles as it was. And South Central is, is known for uh, being one of the tougher parts of, of Los Angeles. You have a high unemployment rate in the 1990s, you have a lot of uh, gang activity, uh, you have um, substandard education, uh, some of the housing was not great, and so some of these things that we saw in the 1960s uh, were um, still um, being the case even into the 1990s. Uh, we're talking a uh, billion dollars in damage, uh, many, many that are uh, injured, we have 53 that are killed, and what we're going to see is that, you know, for, and you can see based on this uh, graffiti that we see here, a lot of this is going to be gang related, so this really ties into uh, some of what we saw in the 1980s with the crack movement and, and the um, kind of the, the proliferation of some of these uh, street gangs as a result of that. And so we're talking, this is something that, that went on almost a complete week. Um, and for, you know, people, you know, certainly my age and, and older, you know, when you think of South Central Los Angeles, that's something that, you know, you immediately think back to 1992. It's hard not to uh, because of just some of the, the, you know, again, we have this 24-hour um, press and the news cycle, and that's something that came to um, symbolize South Central Los Angeles, sadly. And we're going to see, uh, much as we saw in Detroit in 1967, uh, it's, you know, the, the amount of lives lost and, and injuries and destruction was absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so what uh, led to the Los Angeles riots? There's a couple of different things. And uh, you'll see this in the video clip, they talk about this, but uh, really in Los Angeles, there have been a long line of um, uh, police officers that um, were not trusted within the community, we'll say that. And this ultimately comes to a head in 1992. And the LAPD has a really rotten reputation as, as we get into the 1990s. All right, so what's the situation with Rodney King? Well, he is uh, driving a car. Um, was he drunk? Yes. Was he on drugs? Yes. Um, he talks in the documentary and says, you know, I was, I was breaking uh, parole. So is he, is he breaking the law? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, there's no question about that. Uh, however, when he's pulled over uh, and he leads the cops through this um, chase uh, through Los Angeles, and when they finally pull him over and pull him out of the car, uh, they commence with with beating him, and it's pretty, it's a pretty savage beating, as you will see on the video, and you can see on the still image here. Um, but what made this totally different, and you have to think, you know, in 1992, people didn't have uh, smartphones. You know, people aren't recording like literally everything, and so most things are not caught on tape uh, during this time. However, this one was, and there happened to be a um, 
there happened to be a guy that lived in the apartment complex across from where this uh, traffic stop happened and he got a, a new camcorder if you've ever seen one of these things they were pretty cutting edge in, in the 1990s and he was just filming things and, and happened to be filming this traffic stop and it's like oh no because uh, this turned out to be uh, a brutal brutal beating um, as you'll see in the documentary when it comes to you know the, the amount of injuries that uh, Rodney King suffered and so he was tased kicked beaten um, and my mom uh, when she, she used to work out in Western Kansas and worked with a woman whose son was was uh, part of the LAPD. And it was his, I think it was like his second day on the job or something like that. Now, he wasn't one of the ones that was administering the beating, uh, but he was there. And one of the things that, um, you know, she always said that, or that it was reported is that he, you know, he didn't know what was going on. He was totally scared. Uh, but yeah, totally weird that you have some sort of connection, even um, by just minutia uh, that it was. Uh, at any rate, this is something that's going to be really heavily covered in the media. And, you know, the reaction in Los Angeles was, well, yeah, this has been going on for a really long time. And But now there's video evidence that's showing um, that there may not be equity when it comes to uh, law enforcement um, in Los Angeles. And so what we're going to see is that four of the officers that were uh, part of the uh, traffic stop um, go on to uh, getting charged uh, for criminal activity, uh, excessive force, assault, all that stuff. And what we're going to see is, is they uh, try this case um, in the suburbs. And what we're going to see is a, a white jury and um, the, the officers are acquitted of any wrongdoing and that's something that you know a lot of people really couldn't believe and you have to keep this in mind when you're looking at the oj simpson case you have to because these things are are interrelated and, and uh, definitely dovetail when it comes to your understanding of that so you have to understand when looking at oj simpson that the cops that were caught on tape beating uh rodney king were acquitted of any criminal charges and what that's really going to do is it's going to uh, basically spark this powder keg in South Central Los Angeles where you have, you know, all these uh, individuals that don't trust the police. And now we see on uh, tape that the police are engaged in excessive force and an arrest and uh, they get away scot-free. And that did not go over well in the community. And so what we're going to see is that they put a curfew on uh, the city of Los Angeles. And really, and, and, and there's more undercurrents to this. And, and I, I mentioned this because there's, um, there's a scene in that documentary where it shows um, Asian, uh, particularly Korean uh, shopkeepers that are being targeted uh, during the LA riots. I'm like, well, what, what's the deal there? Well, that goes further back into the 1980s, a young lady by the name of Latasha Harlins. And she was a young, um, I think 13, 14, something like that. Um, girl that went into a uh, basically a corner shop and it was owned by uh, an Asian couple and um, th th there was a lot of distrust in, in LA between the Asian community and the black community as well during this time. Um, the woman that uh, was a part owner of this shop thought that Latasha Harlins was was stealing. Uh, she got a I think it was a, a bottle of juice something like that, and ended up shooting her and killing her. And what's really tragic about that whole tale is uh, that when they found Harlan, she actually had um, money in her in the palm of her hand as well. And so just a horrible, ugly, ugly situation there. And so we're gonna see that uh, during the riots, a lot of those uh, Korean owned stores uh, were targeted uh, because of some of that distrust that we see during that time. There is a, uh, uh, Tupac actually has a song about Latasha Harlan's um, I cannot for the life of me think what the name of that was, but uh, you can check that out. Um, and what we're going to see is, you know, with this 24 hour news cycle, again, um, th these riots are going to be uh, televised live, you know, and that, that's going to be something that's going to add extra fuel uh, to the riots. And I, I remember vividly, you know, watching some of these. And one of the uh, very horrible situations that um, occurred live on, on television was a, a guy named Reginald Denny. And he was driving this uh, cement cement truck, as you can see in the, the still image there. And he was literally pulled out of his um, vehicle and, and was beaten and almost killed uh, live on national television. And this was something that was 
uh, very stunning uh, to uh, people that were watching this, watching this happen live. And it was actually somebody that um, lived very close to where this was happening and saw this happen on television. It was like, man, I gotta help this guy out. And scrapes him up off the, off the concrete, takes him to the hospital and saves his life. And so what we're gonna see is that, you know, in Los Angeles, because there was such a distrust of, of the police, you know, we're going to see a situation where the cops didn't respond to uh, some of the criminal activity that was happening during this time. And so we're going to see that, you know, large swaths of the, of, uh, particularly South Central Los Angeles, uh, Compton, Watts, places like that, uh, actually burned down. It's just, you know, complete and total anarchy uh, that's going on. You can see that's a pretty, pretty representative of what's happening in this particular case, a uh, grocery store, but uh, throughout uh, other stores. Uh, within the city of Los Angeles. Then we're going to see Rodney King, and if you watch the documentary again, you really should. Um, his famous quote was, can't we all just get along? And, you know, for um, many within, and this was pretty polarizing within the black community. You know, there were some that, that did not uh, want to resort to violence as a, as a means of uh, solving some of the problems that existed uh, between the, the black community and the police. And then we have um, others that, you know, felt uh, differently. And so there, there's a number of different takes on this. And King uh, famously said those words and, and uh, for some of them in the community that didn't necessarily work. All right, so what are we gonna see? Well, we're gonna see lots and lots of arrests uh, going on during this time. Um, it becomes very difficult, you know, in a riot situation where you have people running all over the place to determine who did what, uh, who committed what crime, whatever the case may be. And so many of those that were arrested, um, you know, were not charged. And, you know, if you understand the legal system, uh, that's where things get um, a little bit dicey. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to see uh, George Bush Sr., uh, who was president during this time. Uh, he calls in the Marines, National Guard, and that's game over. And so what we're going to see is, you know, as, as, um, as the United States is starting to ramp up um, activities within the Middle East, specifically in Iraq, you know, this type of situation looks like something that's happening in Baghdad, uh, but this is something that's happening in the second largest uh, city in the United States, not necessarily a good look. Uh, what we're going to see is uh, LA was indeed, uh, South Central was rebuilt. Um, you have millions of dollars, there was all sorts of uh, celebrity efforts, of course, with, with Hollywood being in Los Angeles, um, being put out there to, to kind of help uh, the community rebuild and kind of rehab uh, the image of Los Angeles. But what we're, we're, what we're seeing in, in um, you know, some of those places in Compton and Watts is that, you know, for a lot of the uh, independent store owners, uh, they were never able uh, to rebuild. You know, they were, they were totally ruined as a result of the uh, Los Angeles riots. And that made things even worse uh, for an impoverished community that um, doesn't necessarily have um, much in terms of jobs and opportunity going anyway. And then when some of those small businesses uh, end up having to shutter, uh, that is a problem. And we see a pay less a shoe source and, you know, it's just complete and total uh, chaos in Los Angeles. And what we're going to see too is LA had a pretty bad reputation uh, as a result of this. You know, in big cities um, in the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s, you know, were associated with uh, crime and, and uh, gangs and, and uh, crack cocaine, some of this stuff. And that just kind of um, helped um, solidify uh, this image of Los Angeles being an incredibly dangerous place. And uh, again, on that documentary, you're going to see how that ties into uh, the hip hop. And this is where we start to see, um, you know, where gangster rap becomes something that is uh, much more mainstream, you know, when we look at uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and some of those uh, rappers that, that came from Los Angeles and the West Coast as well. And, and um, we're going to see that it ends up costing, you know, billions of dollars uh, for the city of Los Angeles, the state of California, and really for the United States as a whole, you know, trying to uh, revitalize uh, some of these neighborhoods uh, that we see in South Central. And so that's just kind of the quick overview of the LA riots. Uh, next time I see you guys, we will look at uh, the OJ Simpson trial. So until then, uh, take care.